Locked in with the locked in podcast. Flash it on me. Podcast this week. This baby C Mac. What it do? What's good? It's the Locked In Podcast. What's the Locked In Podcast, man? We back at it again with the whole gang of them. You know what's going on, man? Slap Anyways, how you doing? What else you do today, Khaled? Fucking making beats and shit, Young Pharrell. <laughs> um, shit, yeah. He I'm was just, making beats today. Yeah, and uh, oh, oh, I wrote my first uh verse. The the I very no no, no no, I nigga, I been writing verses. <laughs> oh, uh, no, we gotta see, we gotta see you later. I'm, later it, nigga. I'm everybody ghostwriting. Nah, I'm I'm bullshitting. Uh, I wrote my first screenplay. Mm, oh, right. I, st- I should say I started on it, but I got a good chunk of it done. I really only want my first short film to be like eight minutes, but I fucking st- instead of making it, instead of having this dream or this idea or whatever that don't turn into shit, I got to work on it, and I'm almost done. So I'm gonna shoot that shit soon. Cold. Did yeah. you? It took one day, or like what? You got like one page type shit. Um, yeah. So I wrote for about two hours, and um, I got three scenes done. So I think to close it out, I only need five scenes. So it's only about maybe like 20 to 30 more lines of dialogue. Um, and then the dialogue that I have down, I kind of have ideas for the characters that I want playing them. Mm-hmm. And so I'm actually going to audition people. It's going to be sick. You're going to audition Are you going to shoot it yeah. yourself? How are you going to do that? Because you got to read the lines the and it's got to be believable. Yeah, I know. You know, so like, what if I get the wrong person and the whole movie goes to shit? Yeah, facts. So it has to be a believable person mm-hmm. for each role. Right, you want that. them to execute it. That's probably yeah, like... Yeah, if you can't read the lines, like, if you if you read them awkward, which honestly, you'd be surprised. It's the majority of the time, they are awkward. Yeah. Unless you're like a real... Like, we don't live in LA. Yeah, I know, but it's like... Where niggas gotta, like, go to acting school and take acting serious... These people have never expected to be in a movie in their entire life, so it's like yeah. on camera they're visibly awkward, and yeah. so you have to make sure that they can like hold know. composure and yeah, be do, do comfortable in front of the camera. Do. Okay, yeah, but I was just like, how like you're gonna like post on your like Instagram? Well, do that like, shit right here. We'll have, we'll have a little um, line outside. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm, I'm like, nigga, like, like yo, actually, yeah, what, want, how you gonna reel them in? I want to reach out to you, Albert, Marco, everyone that I know at mm-hmm. least. Be like, yo, I'm shooting a short film. If you know anyone who ha- who looks this way, um, tell them. Like, literally send them a text right now. Yeah. Have them come out, audition real quick. I'll fucking buy them a glass of wine while they do the shit. <laughs> Can you give me a plot, like the plot of it? Um, just like, yeah. yeah, so it's basically like the main chunk of dialogue that I wrote is like a mobster who's sh- like a black new money gangster who's like trying to shake down this like mafia mob boss Mm. and it does not go well for him and it's really just like more about the setting the dialogue everything like that i'm trying to get to the climax immediately because i don't have two hours to spend telling the story so um that's the basis of it that's interesting i love when my when my people start like uh getting started on their creations you know right and right. actually putting it into play whether it's just like putting it on paper right now i got one other one about a bounty hunter that i want me to be in uh i want me to be the crack dealer <laughs> uh but i haven't started on the actual dialogue of that one yet okay I'm idea kinda, yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to act in that thing. I'm gonna shoot my shot. No, you gotta let me know if my shit ass though. If my shit ass. Albert could be the up and coming gangster. I'm trying to really go on, like in on my. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be the snitch. Night. What? <laughs> what, nigga? Nah. No, I, uh, I actually, Albert did come in a, into my head uh, when it came to like the new one. Hey, yo, gangster, pause. Right? Yeah. Pause. But, like I would have to. <laughs> no, for real. I but I would like I have a vision in in my mind, but. It's either between you or this other dude who works at um, Pizza Ray Bianco. I think he would be tight for it. Oh, your homie always talk about him. Yeah. Uh, he designs clothes, too. Yeah, yeah. I think he told me that, too. Uh-huh. You uh-huh. say tapping in with the little waitresses and shit. Like, when we go to Nobu, you <laughs> no be talking cat. to her about her, like, collection. I ain't seen shit from this bitch, but you know <laughs> all about it. I mean, yo, I'm... <laughs> I pride myself on just I'm being talking a my nice shit person. Today. Like, you know, the first thing I usually ask these waitresses who, like, work... Even waiters who work long ass days with shitty people most of the time, I'm like, how how's your day been? Like, you know, yeah, how you doing? Really you see, like, how you really doing, man? Yeah. Like, I know you over here yeah, yeah, yeah. giving me my drinks. I see you yeah. all the time. We might as well chop you, it up. You feel me? 
and you usually like you'll go kick it by yourself too so like all the time yeah it's more susceptible yeah, to yeah. like talking to other people and stuff yeah that's the thing i'm not like i want to be left alone too but at the same time like i'm always asking you like how your days man i feel it yeah. um you see our little video we did a little like fit battle no we dropped a little fit battle bro, yeah just go on the locked in page right now bro watch it and I'm, tell me your honest opinion. you know cal doesn't follow the locked in page that's crazy what I feel like I do. Whoa, well, you're being you called out right now, bro. Pull your Instagram God. out, bro. He's, How do you not follow the locked in page, bro? You're literally on, on the podcast, bro. Right. It's fucking out I of pocket, dog. Here, look, this is the video. Fit Wars going off. My boy AB at yeah, Bucky 2. Casa on top. Rick on the bottom. Marnie slides. Fuzzy, wuzzy. Oh, hit your dance. Uh, 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 uh. My boy Frankie. Rude sunglasses. Frankie stupid. looks fucking Casa tight. Top, bro, Frankie had the fit. Frankie looked fucking sick. All right, all right. Who won, though? Frankie. Frankie? Yeah, Frankie, Frankie won. Frankie what? got that. To me, honestly, it was like either me or Frankie. AB killed the comments. You know, AB, the most popular nigga <laughs> in the fucking earth. His Look. Family reunion down that bitch, turning him up. <laughs> I get what hey, you're man, I, get I asked all my family that like lived in my house that commented. I was like, did you really think like I had the best fit? And they're like, yeah. Like, yes, if if you had some wax shit on, I wouldn't have voted for you. You know what you look like though? What? You don't look like AB. You almost look like um a character in like a movie. Uh, City of Gods. Like yeah, City of Gods. Shia Benny. Type like Jamaican type shit. Ace said I look like Benny in City of Gods. Yeah. It's, I, it's, it's just the hair. Yeah, it's on it was Brazil, the hair. It was the hair. Jamaica, whatever shit. And I think it's just the hair. Shirt. Silk shirt. Mm. And Silk when shirt you do the glasses when you get money in the hood. I had the needles glasses in, on. In like not in the hood. In the in poverty. <laughs> shit, just like it. Period, though. That yeah. shit's like the most like elegant kind of thing. Like I just, shirt, I just had the best hair. fit. Right. Got to give it to my nigga. Ah, man. Fair square. square. <laughs> nah, feel yourself. Don't ever doubt yourself. I mean, it's subjective. It's like being like, what's your favorite movie? And we got to get like, you in the next one wrong. though. And you just have to, you just have to pick pieces from the uh, like from the store. store. Um, the palm, palm track suit. You want palm track? Yeah. You losing, but. <laughs> You everybody. might look cool. But I gotta I'm pick. gonna look like the funniest out of everybody. Yeah. I'm like, I'm cool with that. Right. <laughs> We're, it's just gonna make it go a little, a little more viral. <laughs> no, nah, were you there when I put on the full palm track? Nah. I almost posted that, that picture of you today. Because I have the picture. <laughs> just put it as a thumbnail next to this. <laughs> yeah, I gotta put it on this shit. Yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> I, I don't know. What, what was your energy this day, bro? You oh, came man. in and put that shit on. My energy was, I'm getting money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a get money outfit. I'm not. You're not even lying. Are those your shoes? Yeah, those are your. Why shoes. you roll it up though? Why you roll up one one uh, one of the? He was pants? on his L O Cool J. Nah, nigga, I was on my. I'm getting money. I'm getting to the paint. God, talking about I was on the block all day. I was Jeez. on my fucking big money meat. Tough, <laughs> tough, tough. Um, start this thing off. What's up? What's good? Welcome to the Locked In Podcast. It's your host Albert Houston. Got the game with me today, yes, AB. Sir. What's the deal? How you feeling? Hey man, we just grinding. Yo, literally. My um, young so lead. I'm gonna start this kind of a different way. Let's do it. My homie Noah got a what I call the next item of the summer. Uh, maybe not even in the summer. Just the something next, he made. Nah, just the next fashion piece that's gonna be big. Sing got the coolest pair of fucking sh like jean shorts. I've seen in a minute. He got the baggy joints and the long joints, and they actually look fucking perfect. Hard. And that's what I'm gonna start the podcast. Like kind of like ICP vibes, kind of like. Not because it's not janky. It's not janky. It borders that line though. You Where'd you get him? I mean? Um, the same place he got that T-shirt. The mm. the Vintage Store in Mesa. Shout out. What's it called? Meat Market. Meat Market in Mesa. Shout out them. The owner's a 19 year old kid. Very knowledge, very knowledgeable, sick spot, sick people. You know, oh, good market. prices. I'm gonna check that shit out. Yeah, you got a photo of it, uh, of the they, jeans, uh, jean shorts. shorts. They're very nineties. Uh, they're they're really dickies. Bad. They're really baggy. Oh, they're dickies. They're dickies. Yeah, they're really baggy and. Uh, they're actually not that baggy. They're a little bit slim, but they're long. Yeah. Okay. You know, like. He's, like on some John Cena. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And that's nah, what, his that, just a shorter. No, 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 because that's what I pointed out to him. I was like, that's the thing. You don't want to go with the classic Levi short that everyone has been doing, like the Travis Scott, you know, yeah. knockoff, where it's like the wide and it's just past the knee and it's like janky. You it's look like, like literally a like, Jane. You look Jane like you're in third grade. 
the one where it's a little longer these are actually a little bit slimmed in oh, and okay. they look and they're dark dark denim so it just actually looks sick especially mm. if you wear a tight ass like 70s 80s era t-shirt with it fit tough like yeah jean shorts are shit. definitely going crazy that's right? the shit that and people, you, gotta, you, you do got to get like the certain silhouette you know what i'm saying yeah. like a good silhouette that's that's the silhouette that vogue will take a picture of you in Right. Yeah. Like, fuck what these niggas talking about and like, you know, commenting on like fuck all that shit. It's like who's who from a magazine publication is gonna be like, I need a picture of that bit. Right. Facts. I mean we were kinda talking about that last time, like how you're saying like uh it's harder to dress like in a weird way, like an obscure way with like still looking good without looking too tacky, you know what I'm saying? Like really like baggy shorts with yeah. like maybe a high top shoe or something like you if can't you pull that off. It's that's like a, a real stylish look. You can't dress for the masses if you really want to be like, quote unquote. This is the fucking dumbest shit I've ever said on this podcast ever. But like a fashion icon really can't <laughs> focus on like the thoughts of the masses. You really have to focus on like a what you want, b being different, and c appealing to the crowd you want to appeal to you know what i mean yeah like those are the three main ways to actually like break out of this fucking hype cycle i've been peeping this new uh it's like model kind of like fashion icon kid from new york he's like on the come up his name's ben slacken yes sir yeah i, I you think know? i'm familiar with him east he's, africa he's stand east up african, yeah. east africa yeah yeah, yeah. 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 to he me he's like one of the Ontario. toughest yeah yeah yep. i feel like he's one of the craziest doing now i would love to get like a do an interview with him too but you know like um, how cold? Mm -mm. Put me Wait, you know, no, no, no. You know I, I do know. Yeah, yeah, you know how cold, right, bro? He, you see the jean shorts he made, bro? Those are crazy. I, I'm crazy. not familiar with him, but to, can you pull it up real quick? Yeah, I'll pull to it go up, back yeah. to the first person, I think that if any brand was really smart, they would hire Ben Slacken for like a real position yeah. in the company. Oh no, he's already he's already like on sure the way he, there. I'm huh? sure. But he wasn't at Paris Fashion. Like I feel like this should have been his year where he was like starring in something. I mean. I don't know. Look, I'm ignorant to it to to a large degree because I don't oh, know the details of yeah. what so he's doing or his business yeah, dealings. But I wouldn't be surprised if several pieces that are featured in Paris Fashion Week right now were at least somewhat contributed by him. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Like meaning like what he put these silhouettes on and then they, they like kind of copied did, it. I think he's working with several brands. If I if my Hunch is correct. I think so too, though. No, yeah, he's, he's posted some of he's posted some of the work he's done. I think like, he's working for several big companies. Yeah. If you have any kind of online presence in the fashion world, it's mm -hmm. easier than ever to get hired by a big position, like a big brand, for a sizable position. You know, yeah. you're not going to be making a ton of money, but you'll be contributing. Yeah, it's know? the experience right. too, yeah. and like and exactly the yeah. resume. But I, for him, I think he's more on that styling tip. More than like designing. I seen him beefing with uh, Reese LaFleur the other day. Yeah. Yeah. It was just I, because I like know. Reese LaFleur commented under no 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 I think like it was like it's like one of these pages that say like yo like I don't know it's like if you dress like if you have a bad fit it's like the worst fits type pages type shit. Yeah, and they put and him on there. Yeah, they put Ben Slacken on there like and the then Balenciaga skirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And oh. then Reese LaFleur commented and was like. I think he just commented like some laughing emojis or some shit, but he got like all in his feelings about it and they started going back and forth. It was honestly like kind of lame as fuck. They I mean, probably like had a, had a, like an incident about. in New York. So look, I'm not arguing with no nigga about dressing. Yeah. That's crazy. No. Yeah. That's like, that's just like, mind, you know? nigga, I know like, I got me, swag. You fuck all, out of here. Like, that's just corny. Like, bro, what? That's fuck. Um, so this brand. Oh, let's comment on the back to jean shorts. So, yeah, the jean shorts. I want everyone to succeed, truly. Um, and this isn't to be taken the wrong way. You, you looked at them? Um, yeah, the two things I don't... I mean, they, they look pretty average. Um, the the main standouts are the paneling on the side, oh, fuck, I just um, the distress, and obviously, like, the the stitching that's added on top of it. But um, with rips, I'm very, very particular. Oh, let me break this down. Okay, so it got the flare on the sides. It has the... Um, distressing. Th yeah, mad distressing all throughout it. But then that, like, some of, what, of, like, a boro stitching. Right. Throughout the pan. Exactly. But they, the way they fit are, like... 
And the colorways are different. Yeah. Maybe like that, they got maybe the red. The way like they fit are different. The key yeah. thing to them. They're sick. Oh, like, they he had a picture of, like, him. Yeah, let me show you some other shit. But they had some cool shit. I have a theory yeah. that... It's, it's how not they even fit. a theory, but I, I really, truly have a belief that um, distressing oh, can either yeah. go one of two ways. It's either going to look tacky as fuck or it's going to look fucking remarkable. It's going to look like a work of art. Yeah, no, for sure. And there's, like, a true art to it because I've definitely distressed jeans before that's, like, ass. It don't look like... When you don't spend the real time shit. on it yeah. and, like, by time, it. I mean... It takes months, sometimes years, to really get the distress that you want on certain jeans. That's why APC had an actual tag on the back of their jeans for Mad Long. I, I, I think Nudie did this as well, where they told the customer, you're not supposed to wash these for a minimum of eight months after mm. daily wear. So I've seen people wear, like, they put a, a pair of brass knuckles in the back pocket every single day that they wore their jeans. So when they finally first washed them, that silhouette of the brass knuckles was in there. That's sick. Um, I've seen that with the dipping cans. Right. So the whiskering and the distressing and all that Mm. is so prominent and just, like, so beautiful, you know? Because there's a story behind it above all things. Right. Um, When you kind of try and do it quick specifically in a factory setting if if it's a machine doing it it's the tackiest in the world um you feel like you feel like it's only can be done like handmade like that I feel like you can definitely like yeah you can distress get shit by hand and and um, no, I feel like it won't machine. necessarily take eight months but yeah if you distress it by hand and you spend your time you spend maybe a full day maybe two days on just working on it so you're saying yeah, like, absolutely you can make something beautiful are you like referencing that based off like what you've seen on his shit i'm almost referencing what i've done myself uh, i've been impressed at my own capabilities of like distressing things and to be honest it was bari who showed me how to distress things originally so everything from this brand toast to the gods which was bari's first um denim fashion shit, right? project it was all like margilla jeans and acne jeans and designer jeans dior whatever he would distress it by hand he'd wash it um, a different color, etc. He, he'd fuck with these pieces. And um, Virgil called Bari the denim god. Yeah, he didn't spend years on it. He is. He didn't spend years on it, but he spent enough, really enough diligent hand time on it where he was able to almost replicate like a two year process in, you know, a week. Yeah, a short yeah. amount of time. Right. Um, I'm going to shift gears. I, I heard a rumor about Blincy. Blincy and Uzi are supposed to be doing a collab. I hope so. That's what's going in the air. I think that would be sick. I yeah. hope well, so, Where'd too. you hear this rumor from, brother? The streets, man. I can't uh, even imagine what got that would sources, look like. sources, huh? Yeah. Huh? I can't even imagine what that would look like. Yeah, me either, honestly. I, I, okay, if I had to guess, I feel like it's going to be like... I feel like it has to be bright colors. That baggy shit. I want him to sure take baggy. it. I want him to take it to like planet fucking Neptune. But what's a Uzi aesthetic? Like it's fuzzy. Neptune. <laughs> yeah, I'm and like otherworldly. Yeah. He's like he's literally a Martian. But what like <laughs> what's something to take it to Neptune? Like how do you take Blincy to Neptune? Because Blincy, so, if anything, has been going like kind of like backdated. You know, with the like fucked right, up chucks right, right, and right. shit. Um, very Marilyn Manson fan aesthetic. But um, you remember like the last Louis Vuitton show? How they did the bags. With like the big boom boxes on it, and I was yeah. like, I hope I see Uzi in that, like some shit like that. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I hope he really kind of like pushes the limit on like what clothes can be. I hope so too. I think they'll they'll definitely come up with something sick. Everything's been referenced. Every time period of fashion, music, art, culture has been referenced already. Yeah, yeah. that's why they, they did the seventies, they did the eighties, they did the nineties. We're now in post Y two K slash Y two K era. It's like, all right, what are we doing? It's like, make something new now. Mm-hmm. Is where everyone is. Right. Literally. So, the, like, and you could just take it back to another day, or you can, like, do something very futuristic, like you are saying. Mm-hmm. But I, which I feel like, uh, I like brands like that, too. Like, a Cold War, I feel like they do a very futuristic aesthetic. I think Rick Owens, too. Rick Owens, you think so? Yeah, yeah. for sure. When I think of a Cold War, I think, um, I don't think nothing really uh futuristic 
that, uh, not the word I'm oh, thinking shit. of is like um, mind bending. You know, nothing is necessarily um, pushing the envelope on on what exists. It's all it's all already been done to a certain mm-hmm. extent, right. but it fits into London and London techwear so perfectly that he does it just seamlessly. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's the best. He's one of the best at it. I feel like he's everybody's like favorite deep down inside. Like meaning like people don't really talk about it besides like we might hear it in our conversations and shit. But like whenever I see like somebody just talking about himself on YouTube or something like that. They always mention Samuel Ross and Koal. Like, yeah, I like his shit a lot. Like, I think he's like he everyone's doesn't get enough favorite. Flowers, I feel like. Fucking underrated, like, designer. He's sure. underrated, but yeah. um, he fits in where he fits in, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, his shit is not for everybody, for sure. It's London tech where you got to live in a rainy city. What he, didn't he this He dropped, like, a, a paddock or something like that? He dropped something crazy. They did that Beastroy, Who Decides War, a Cold Ooh, Wall collab. Let's talk I about that. that. That's about to be stupid. The triple threat. That's crazy. I've never seen three I'm looking brands at the pieces right collab now. on one I have collection. never seen three brands collab on one, on one piece. That That's the coolest part about and it. And they're all, like... Niggas under Virgil, like yeah. it's 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 tough. It's gonna be sick. It was cool, but they didn't put their efforts together to make like an like a crazy piece. I feel like we haven't seen it all. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we've seen it all because yeah. I I think they I would do like more just than just like this T-shirt. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what I saw. Yeah. But imagine three of your favorite artists, let's say from the '80s, right? Mm-hmm. So you got Andy Warhol, Basquiat, and like. Uh, I don't know, another fucking 80s artist mm-hmm. together to make a piece, and they just did a drawing. You'd be like, ah, eh, it's underwhelming. Right. Yeah. But if they were to make, like, a big sculpture or something, you'd be like, fuck yeah. Yeah, I, like, I feel like I that, we just got, like, on. the tiniest bit So if they made something like, you know that Stone um, Stone Island color-changing piece? Mm-hmm. They did something in that That realm, realm. you'd be, like, oh, kind of more excited yeah, about it, Yeah, right? where they push the envelope. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's what would excite me, and what I think other consumers would want to see as well. Yeah. I feel like we don't know, like, the full, like, meaning behind the collection yet, so. Well, I just you feel like they're going to drop more pictures. Like, yeah. I feel like this shit. It could be, like, the photos know, were literally, like, like Sam and like, Ross taking pictures. Fucking non-profit pictures. shit or something. Who knows? Even then, though, I still want to see them go digital, yeah, exactly. though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they will, for sure. When artists link up, they should, like, try and go nuts. Yeah. But the three-peat? That's gonna be crazy. Three I've never seen three crazy. They do kind of, right. no, but bro's cool. kind of right though. They kind of gotta go digital. Like y'all yeah. can't just put three tags on my shit and yeah. I just got a T, yeah. nigga. I need some three tags and a crazy ass jacket with fourteen layers right. on that bitch. Yeah, jacket. no cap. They they better do that. I turn and into a zebra. Who something. knows? What if we see like you should be trying to get other trios start? I should be what? Like when you do that, you should be trying to get your piece in a museum. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like these are three great minds coming together to like make something that they're all very experienced in. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's hard to do, too. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's already be hard to, like, overwhelming. I feel like collaborate with somebody. At this level, I, they've obviously done it a million times. They know how to work and through it. But I could just imagine if they really took time out to really, like, uh, just do a collection, I, I would imagine it's pretty hard, especially with all their schedules and shit. True, so. but exactly. here's my thing. is like, all right, if, you're, if you decide, all right, I fuck with you, I fuck with you, we all fuck with each other, we're three of the best designers in our class, right? right? Let's, let's collaborate, let's make something. It's so obvious to do a t-shirt. It's so fucking obvious. But you gotta do a T. Yeah, they gotta do a T. But, yeah, sure. Make it fucking free. Do, like, do an exhibit. This ain't no regular ass T. Yeah, do an exhibit at the LACMA and then make that, like, a commemorative bit. We don't know how how they're gonna lay it out yet, though. So, I have no idea, true, yeah. but what they've released so far is just... A sneak peek of a shirt. Just a sneak yeah. peek of a, of a shirt. Yeah. So, like, let's say you were to do, like, an actual exhibit at, like, a museum and make that, like, commemorative, then that's how you, like, that's the best use of all three of your minds coming together. Like, let's yeah. push the limits on what we can make. That's fact to you. Um, did you... Did you watch the TikTok that I sent in the chat about Dior? Here, I'm going to play it right now. Here, I'll watch it. I thought this was pretty interesting because this is like some shit that we talk about. That's crazy, though. Fucking Dior. Because they really are just ripping the fuck Yeah, out. like I, I was surprised when I seen that ASIC. I've never seen that. It's Lambin right there. Same goes for Givenchy. What are you buying into? Being inauthentic and lack of taste. There's no reason to buy 
Okay, that Givenchy shoe is kind of a stretch, bro. That one shoe with the fucking crazy. So yeah, this is one person's opinion, but at the same time, it's what every brand does, though. Oh no, I feel like the Da Vinci one is solid though. I feel like this, that's like the puddle fruit you were saying. No, I'm talking about this, every, this everyone shoe. copies. Like, so I don't see how that's copies, what do they copy copied with silhouettes uh, with that one, you know? Right, touche. Everyone does. Yeah. And the whole thing about getting a, a nice designer one is that it's gonna last you longer. Like that's obviously, such an Asics though. Like why that's OD. It, why or wouldn't Ramon, Solomon though? Let me ask you something. Why wouldn't um, Rick Owens Ramones be in that same conversation? That's different. Why? Because they don't like continuously do it. It's because, yeah, it. yeah. It's because there's not a Rick Owens not, fucking Solomon or there's, Gort, They don't Gort continuously do it. Like, everyone knows they did the, the and fucking And there's like a story converse, behind it. That was it. You know? you know what I'm saying? Like, what other shoe did he copy? The van. The van. But like. Bro. But those are like. Do, like, I, the, I could, those did I not could re continue. How, how many people have those? Yeah, the dunks. Eh. That's so different, though. The, what are you talking? He named it. Okay, no, 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 no. Hold on. Let me. I, I, I have a good reason, though. I, I feel like it's, it's different. He got Obviously, sued. I feel he, like he it's different. He successfully got sued by Nike. They had to discontinue it. Right, right, right. But he did it worse than. He's not, he's not continuing to do that. He's yeah. not. He's not dropping like a fucking. And he definitely ain't doing that shit uh, today. A sportswear either. ass. He like, makes Ramones a, every year. Bro, come on, bro. But everybody right. just re released the band. Bro, bro. The what? That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah that, he did a collab with. He did a collab with Converse. And that's cool. Yeah, Andy did. Yeah, Andy did the cool. Club. I like. All right, I but we're naming, it, and he knows it. Ramon, like the name Ramon comes from the band Ramones. Their uniform, we know the, the story. leather jacket, and and Converse. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't though. Yeah. But it, it, he's obviously he's leaning into it. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's making a nicer converse. But he's to come out it. every season and like drop some shit that looks just like the last shit, he like knows that. there's a puddle boot. The nigga has a puddle boot. Like look like no. He had I can't, like a, I can't speak for the puddle boot because I, I don't know one way or another. Bro, but. Rick Owens is on a whole different I agree. fucking he wavelength, about, okay. and everyone knows like it's not no debate so that Valencia Rick is on a different what about wavelength. Valencia with the shitty um, converse, like that with the holy converse. That to me is that's not like, different. Like no, no one has no one came out with a shoe that's already that destroyed. Like who has done that? But the silhouette is not new. Bro, fuck the silhouette. The shoe's already destroyed when you buy it. Like who has ever done that? Nobody. So is the beef basically just like don't copy other people's shoes? Because I think these it's just, are all no, copies it's, of shoes. It's not right, even right. No, I think it, I think it's about enough. how you do it. It's about if you do it like consistently, and it's like okay, everybody's like doing a fucking puddle boot now. Mm -hmm. Let me go do a puddle boot. Oh, everybody. Oh, Solomon's are cool now. Like the fucking Gort Core kind of shoes. Oh, is let that, me do a Gort Core shoe. That Rick's not, not doing that. Is that not the majority of fashion? No, it is. Right. And this is. I mean, we. This is not the Trend. first time we talked about this topic. Right. Too. Trends exist. And tr and brands that like money are gonna do. Hence, it. all brands follow trends. Like right, yeah. but also yeah. I feel like it's unless, unless unless you're true to your art, if you want to be a creative, and you want to say fuck the trends. Cool, you're gonna make significantly less money, but you'll have more integrity at the end of the day. You'll probably have more cult like fo fans and a cult like following, but you're gonna make significantly less money. But, like, that's just the name of the game. If you want to make money, you copy what's successful. Yeah, but I think it's all about how you copy. Obviously, nobody gets mad. Exactly. Like, like. People get mad at people for copying, but, like, it's all about how you do it. Because we all know everybody does it, you know? Yeah. It's, there's a tasteful way of, like, copying. Golden And then there's not. What about it? What are they copying? Um, are you talking about the destroyed shoe again? Every single silhouette that they release is a variation of some popular shoe. Yeah, I guess That's you can say. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't really. I'm not really fucking tapped in with Golden Goose like that anyway. Um. No, I agree. Yeah, we sell hair on Pressons that look exactly like Stan Smith. It's and a very look. Every brand does it. Stan Smith is the most popular simple silhouette. It sells to everyone. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel everyone like, does it. But don't you think there's like certain silhouettes that okay everybody remakes, and then there's some silhouettes that like are actually kind of different. Like, meaning Converse. Everybody does, like, the Converse. Everybody does, like, a Stan Smith, some type of classic yeah. shoe. But, like, even, like, those, like, those Gucci shoes. Like, people aren't really doing that. People do a chunky shoe, but, like... The bad shoe? Yeah. yeah. But they're not, like, exactly ripping the same, like, thing off. I guess. I mean, look, if you ripped it enough, then that brand can sue the living shit out of you. 
and right. take and just yeah. take all your money. So like obviously they Dior's can, definitely doing that. They copied Lamb and they copied A6. Copy a lot of people, yeah. but that's but well, my, that's you know back to my main point is like that's fashion. Mm -hmm. All right, let's break let's break down fit checks. Let's go first. Uh, go crazy, Kelly. Go crazy, Kelly. I don't know what I even have on. I guess I, uh, I'm wearing my one of my favorite T-shirts I own. It's a uh, it's a Supreme T-shirt, which is rare for me to actually still own in this day and age. But this is Lou Reed, um, Terry Richardson. The vest. Um, the vest I got in Paris. Some vintage store. Um, I'm wearing the same jeans I think I've had on for the last like four weeks on this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm probably the same shoes also. That's what Just Converse. Ramones. Converse. Converse. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, I got the Rick Boots, Dior. Your brother called them the, the Nazi Stompers. The Nazi Stompers, Needles Flannel on the Beater. Tough. Yes, lightweight sir. chilling. Lightweight chilling. Got Honor the Gift. Shout out Russell Westbrook. And then I got these Lees on. I wear these bitches all the time. I think I wore these the last podcast. And then I just picked up mm. these motherfuckers. The Crip. Yeah, the oh, Five Eyes. The colorway. Yeah. The colorway's and he, and cool. And you got Westbrook. You feeling real LA today, huh? Man, super. <laughs> I woke up out of bed, started Crip walking. <laughs> Instantly threw the setup. So How about that, got to the bread. No, those shoes are really, are really tight. Thank you, thank you. You got them laced up like perfect, too. Honestly, I just pulled him out the box. I didn't even do nothing. Hey, the one on the left hey. looks like you. Looks sick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I just keep it like that. Because it kind of hangs over. Like yeah. that too, huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't like having my shoes Yo, tight. Half of wearing a shoe is how you lace it. I've seen some niggas fuck up nice shoes by tying them wrong. No, 100%. I always like my shit loose. Like, you gotta, times got, ten, yeah. Unless it's like a boot, you got to tie right. it. But like, my shit is gonna be loose. Nah, you gotta spend. Bit of, you gotta spend. Anybody like, who has their shit too tight, burnt out. You gotta do trial and error on how you tie your it. shit for like. Fuck tying my shoes. I put my bitches on and walk. Or I just remember like kids like used to like really tie the vans. Like the yeah, bitch only had bro, four nah, loopholes and they just go. Tie yo tying <laughs> converse and tying vans is the worst. Loose loosen out shoes like just with the little bit of the shoelace hanging out the top. Especially That's, like, high how top I converse. Keep my shit. Especially high top converse. Yeah. You like you damn near don't even like lace your shit, huh? Like you'll just let your shit go. Like oh, high top yeah, converse, yeah. I like to let the laces just drag on the floor, and get dirty <laughs> and black. <laughs> now cool. I'm the type of nigga to really step on my shoelaces. No, like I ass. encourage whoever's walking next to me to step. Like I mean, if my shoelaces are in your way, then by all means step on you my You know, shit, bro. like <laughs> it only makes sense. You bust your ass. <laughs> that's all yeah, I do I, is step, I, nigga. I, you're, you're right. I will <laughs> bust my ass, and that's on me. <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh, actually, we can continue this Dior. The Travis Scott Dior collab. Oh, Cactus Jack Dior is still coming out? It's coming yeah, it's out. coming out July 13th. Damn, he had to wait for all the fucking victims to, like... <laughs> for, for, for them to what? I don't know. I, so then we, nigga, they already did. To be okay? Yeah. No, I don't know. He had to wait for, like, people to stop being mad yeah. at him? Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, obviously, he wasn't... He was waiting on fucking Kim Jones to be like, all right, it's good. All right, let's keep it going. But um, I think that's cool. I think I think it's like the point that Kim Jones spun back around and was like, "Yeah, let's do this collab." Very controversial at this moment. You know that's why Utopia hasn't come out. Yeah, it's because yeah. he's such a commercially viable artist for um, companies now that a lot of people rely on his paycheck. A lot of people rely on his paycheck, and. For him to come out with an album that happens to flop as a result of like whatever it is in the news about him it would, would be it would, catastrophic. It would never flop. It would never flop. Mm. Nah. He could have dropped that shit nah, it's two weeks flop. after the shit. It would not flop. Sure. I didn't. I, I, and you're right. I never. Yeah. Uh, but flop certainly isn't mean, the though, word I would use. But will it do as well as it could have gone crisis averted? Yep. I don't know. No. I don't know. Yeah. Bro, people Fuck were him. mad, bro. He just, he, was, just, he just wouldn't drop it then. It That's was, what he's doing. It was yeah. literally on fucking par to drop. Yeah, I know. He's on route to drop. Yeah, I know. But, like, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he dropped that shit, then it would do the same numbers as he dropped it later. I promise. I don't know. I disagree. That's hard to say, bro. Mm. I, I feel like I, yeah, it would I get even more numbers because they'd be no, like, oh, he, shit, this thing is in the yeah, news. He just dropped the album. Oh, my God. Let me tap in. Bad controversy. And the shit would be fire regardless. A lot of people would have boycotted it. Travis Scott music has never flopped. A lot of people would download it. A oh. lot of people would boycott it. 
Eh. I'm trying to find some good pictures of this Dior collab. Obviously, let's look at these shoes. I feel like some, those are some, some more Lanvins. Some key take. See, to me, I don't, I don't qualify like this as like really like honestly ripping too too much. Those shoes suck. I'm not mad at them, but it, it kind of looks like some Lanvins. Unless if those aren't ninety dollars, like what? <laughs> you know they're not ninety dollars, brother. Of course they're not. But like that looks like any skate shoe I saw at Industrial my entire life. I'm not mad at them, honestly. Like they sit good on some sneakers, look good with some shorts. Yeah, they're not an ugly shoe, yeah. but they're not a nine. They don't command nine hundred dollars or whatever the fuck they cost. I mean, you can say that about all of Dior shoes. Damn, that's kind of wait. I'm kind of I'm kind of fucking with what bro's saying though, because I do like the the Dior shits that like are out now. Mm -hmm. Whatever, like that shit that everybody wears. The, they yeah, come the in, runners come. Yeah, with yeah. the C and D. Like that's actually kind of different. Like this does look like a regular ass. Like regular shoe. as fuck. They're fine. Like I still like them. Yeah, they're so not they're bad. Fat. Yeah. I'm not gonna roast nobody with those on, but like if you spent nine hundred dollars on those, you're <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> they probably more than that, to be honest. Um, yeah, but they're not dropping the the pop smoke tea. Yeah. So I wonder if they're just like not trying to pay the family money, or maybe like that was too controversial, or there's like too many Why legal would that stuff. Be controversial. Well, he yeah. died too young. Honor him. The fuck? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just don't know the reason. I don't know. What I know I'm not getting about. mad at you. I'm getting mad at Dior's like right now. That was the only shit I wanted from the from the drop. That would have been a grail if you'd have got that. Like you could flip that for like thousands for sure. I wouldn't even wear that. Even beyond thing. that, bro, just keep people who die too young. Keep their name alive. Facts. You know, that's what you were saying last podcast with the Virgil shit. Keep their name alive. Man, man. that pop smoke shirt is so hard too, though. Like, crazy are we ever excited about anything that travis scott's drops like yes as far as like clothing wise no. I, I, don't, I honestly i'm not been, like crazy excited i think it's like no sick not what he's doing not close well all right so far no not clothing wise but if he were to do certain things like some of my favorite artists have done in the past then yes i would be very excited like him even so, getting this dior collab was just like so surprising to me honestly but he like I don't even know how much of it he actually did himself. First of all, it's Cactus Jack. It's not even. Anyway, he definitely got. Let, let, I'll use this I'll shit. use an example, right? Kid Cudi did a collaboration with Surface to Air, a uh, brand out of Paris. They made uh, they made a leather jacket collection together, and uh, it was because Kid Cudi was such a fan of their leather jackets. And later on, he went on to do a collaboration with APC as well, yes. Um, but point being, these are two brands that he grew up not just idolizing, but wearing religiously. They were a part of his uniform. So he knew them inside out. So, like, the, co the collaboration only made sense. Okay. You know, for him to finally link up with them and put out his own piece with them that had his name on the back that were perfectly customized to his liking and his you know that is uh, cool speci specifications like that's you know made sense um the theopolis london was the second person to go on and do a surface to air collaboration on a jacket um travis scott is actually wearing one of those jackets he, he was at the party and he's actually wearing one of the one of the surface to air bomber jackets in the uptown video just useless fact to throw in um but i i Commend when people artists take their in time. general artists yeah Kings of Leon did service service to air collaboration as well I commend when artists will go out their way to collab with like a big brand that they just personally like not one that's like Dior you know we know why you doing the Dior one it's like if you would have went to a smaller brand cooler but who, brand, the, who would turn that down yeah who would, exactly that's what I'm saying who would turn that down and I like, mean, it is more tasteful when like somebody build like, up to it so that you have clout to come in build what the fuck build it's Travis Scott can I finish let me just say one, one point build up to it you ain't never you don't, stop, you don't have clout in the design realm <laughs> I don't know if you remember this but when Kanye West wanted to break into fashion he worked at the he was an intern yeah at the Fendi fucking offices in Milan with mm. Virgil running coffees for mm -hmm. the higher ups. He had to put in his fucking work. That's what that you do as difference. a designer. You don't cut 
the line. You don't do all this other shit. That's why I was surprised you, you got the collab. You, yeah, yeah, you you work, but it's clout now. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about these dumbass fashion brands. They just want like they'll link up with anybody off the clout. Facts. What would be a better a better collab that Dior did with somebody like um, Rocky? <laughs> That Dior Straight did with up, somebody. Rocky. No, well maybe they, but um, a pop smoke collab. To really, to really actually put that in a in a perspective, Dior should have either did a callback to the Eddie Slimane collection, and they should have did a collaboration with Eddie Slimane with Celine or something like that. That would have like I'm sure that they could have navigated it to not be corny and actually make sense, be cool, and uh, roll out smoothly. And if you want to talk about someone who's not necessarily like um, a celebrity or whatever the fuck, um, I don't know. Maybe a big. Uh, I I say. don't know. It's very hard to say. Yeah, uh, I wanted to say a stylist, but I, I don't even think they have enough credentials to like. Ooh, actually, okay. execute it. Let's talk about this. Uh, damn, I can't even really say the brand. Is it Loewe? Lo Loewe. Loewe. Yeah. Bam. The, uh, we've all been seeing like the grass growing on the garments and that shit that they did for the spring summer 23. It was actually a collab with this girl named. That is so crazy how they did that Let's shit. See. I was like, what the fuck? I, don't, I wouldn't even know if I want to wear that. Paula Escolona. Escolona. <laughs> see, I'm bad at name. Paula Escolona. Yeah, okay. But I guess I was reading up on her. She's this uh, Spanish designer. And she grew up uh, in her mom's studio. Like, her mom was an artist. And she took a trip to Asia and just started getting into, like, this bioengineering. And she's been growing, like, shit on garments for a minute now. And, like, one of her favorite pieces, I guess she did, like, this shirt or jacket with, like, all these, like, mushrooms on it. But I thought, like, something like that is, like, that's super sick. Because the brand just reached out to her. And I've never heard of her. It's not like she has, like, this crazy cloud where everybody just, like, knows mm -hmm. who this girl is. And... They just broke the internet with that, you know? Yeah, I've seen the videos of how they were doing it. Like, they literally put the seeds on the garments and, like, literally, really grew, grew, like, really grew plants from this shit. I was like, that is so crazy. Yeah, but yeah. I, I want to know, like, how do you man maintain the garment? Like They talked about that. She said uh, the most that she's maintained, like, the garment as far as, like, having, like, some grass or some shit on mm -hmm. is three months. But she's working on a project now that's uh, you can maintain it forever. So, mm. for me, that's when... That's when fashion intersects or almost if you're looking at it from like a Venn diagram standpoint, that's when fashion overarchs and becomes art more than it is fashion, mm -hmm. which a lot of people lose that sense. You know what I mean? Um, or that sensibility, you could even say it's like at the end of the day, this is just your artistic expression. If you're a designer, this is how you express yourself. You know what I mean? So it's not always supposed to be commercially viable, commercially digestible, um, success, like any of that. It's, mm -hmm. it's not always supposed to be, be palatable for everyone. But the main point is you're supposed to be proud and happy with the work that you put out. And I think the example of the trees is just that. It's like, I, I don't fucking know how long these things will last in your closet. Probably not that long, but like, this here's a cool art piece that I know you can't get anywhere else. Right. Facts, a nigga like me is not finna be watering no fucking jacket. Of course not. <laughs> Bro, I just got some plants the other day for the crib and shit's like already kind of starting to die. Thank God I have like Denzel and my girl to like water them bitches every day. Oh man. Spent a little bag on them bitches too. They kind of fly though. Yeah, but you, yeah. Better, you better maintain those, bro. I know I got to. Yeah. It's like a real, it's like a little kid. But having that on a shirt, something would be OD. Like, yeah, I would right? never do that. Shit. Like I would love to wear it. But like, I think that's a fine. lot of designers' um, issues. I wouldn't be, even be surprised if like directors had that same kind of problem. Maybe even photographers. Anyone who works in the creative industry is like, uh, you want obviously you want to make money, right? It and pr to do any production, it costs you a lot. Um, if you're producing clothes, it costs you a fuck ton of money. If you're making a movie, it costs you a fuck ton of money. And if you're a photographer, it costs you some money. But uh, it's all about, like, what do you want to do versus what will make you immediate return, you know? And that's kind of like the juggling act that a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah, facts. A lot of us put on, you know? 
That is true. I mean, I feel like it's just all about grabbing people's attention at this point, especially in the day and age we live in. Like, all our attention, we barely, like, can pay attention to each other sometimes. That, that is true. That Rick piece, that Rick jacket. Which one? Um, The dark shadow black jacket that's, like, a long trench coat. The mm-hmm. one in the store? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Grabs a lot of attention, right? How many people, and a lot of people look at it. How many people like we live in Arizona, bro. I know that. I and I understand that. If we lived in like, if we lived in the East Coast, that shit would have been been gone. Um, but you get what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah, you know? I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's not but I think it brings gone. like. Yeah. Uh, but that is Rick doing his art. Mm-hmm. You know. But like something like that, like does more for the brand too, as far as like just marketing, b- building like brand awareness. You know what I'm saying? Like what Loewe doing the. The fucking grass shit yeah. is just like everybody's like, damn, what the fuck is the web now? Like, oh, their shit. Like, it's gonna make them pay attention. And yeah, but I don't think it's like conscious on that level. Obviously, we're arguing. It's not even arguing, but you know, we're talking semantics at this point. But at the same time, I feel like the really oh, you good feel like brands, they was really trying to get that off. Like, the, yeah. yeah, I feel that exactly. I feel like the really good brands are doing this balancing act of like, okay, let's make this, let's make it a profitable company so that we can continue to do what we want to do and those are the pieces that they want to do you know what i mean understood yeah. that's good that, that is true y'all see jack miss show nah that i seen was him like, talk about it it was like in the it. middle of like nowhere and someone some, like, told me about it though it looked like it was like a snowy place i don't know where it was exactly but everything was like white hmm. shit looked fucking ill it almost looked like some shit from like a star wars movie or something. you think yeah. it was like artificial snow yeah, yeah. it would happen nah. it was in paris right no, I don't think it was. It was somewhere in Europe, though. Where the fuck is it snowing right now? It, I don't know if it, it wasn't snowing. It was like you'll see right here. No, 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 that's not that. That's not the one. That was in Hawaii. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's spring, summer, twenty-two. Spring, summer, twenty-three. Finches. Mm, oh, shit. I can show you some pictures though. Does this place look familiar to you? Not snow, but it is snow. No, I, I don't think it is, no, actually. Like I think it's white sand. Hmm. Yeah. Looks fucking amazing. It yeah. Look amazing. They fucking snap. And then they have, like, the after party Can here. Can you figure out where this was? Fuck. Oh, yeah, he has that Nike clap coming out, too. That shit's sick. Yeah, I don't know, for real. I can't figure it out. But I know it's in Europe, because I knew one of the models that was modeling. And he was like hopping around Europe, so it's somewhere in Europe. You know what my issue is with things interesting. like that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like Nike collabing with all these popular brands. Wait, go to Mike. <laughs> it's cool that they're collabing with like some of these popular brands, but like, why don't they collab with smaller creatives? Like, like Converse had does. Like, um, okay, well, you can say by Nike. You so. can say Aug reaches out to like the most unknown fucking artists who are good at their craft. Mm-hmm. They're good at fucking reaching out to those type of people. You know? Yeah. And it's like, Nike isn't unaware of them. Mm-hmm. Nike's fucking, like, team of people who just search, who scour the internet is massive. Like, they know all of these fucking folks. But they won't hire anyone unless they're, like, can make them money. I, I feel like Ni- Nike's ethics are just so different. Compared to like a brand like Adidas that could do a collab with Balenciaga, like they're Nike is, a, the same. but I feel like no, I feel like Nike they not. are no, they're no. money making brands. They're, yeah, they're money making brands, but, but Nike's but Converse, thing is like sports, like for real, for real. Like, but Converse is owned by Nike, and the Converse does a lot of collabs with smaller people. So they, I think do. they don't they, let they, they, they don't do let do them that. touch that check. Like they don't well, let who's them touch the, the Nike person check. that they've done a collab with, like Joe Fresh Goods from Chicago. But they're huge. Joe Fresh Goods? Yeah. Not, and that wasn't a global release. I barely even I'm know who sure that is. I'm sure that was like a New York only collab. They did uh, Barriers, a Barriers collab. Right. The, these these all make sense. These are things that Nike has been doing since back in the day. The, Nike uh, would not do no Barriers the collab. The Blue Lobster collab, that was with Concepts in Boston. That was just one store that happened to be in Boston. They made a, a you can post a picture of the shoe. They did a very limited collab. Even the Pigeons. The Pigeon SB is arguably uh, the most expensive Nike SB of all time behind, like, the Paris SBs, were a collab with Staple New York. But Staple was dumb popping, though. Why are you so they lobster like that? 
They had one story. That's what you said, the blue lobster. <laughs> Why you spell yeah. it like that? Because uh, I got one hand and I'm like reaching like this, nigga. And I yeah, know Google's going to take blue, me away. Blue lobsters were constantly crazy, man. They did red lobsters before that, but the blue lobsters were like really the most hyped up ones. And this was just a small store in yeah. Boston. Okay, I didn't. I was unaware of this. Concepts. Yeah. And like the really, pigeons though was Jeff Staples was Staple, pop, he was popular. Staple was not global. They had one. It wasn't store. global, but like they had one store in New York. But they had a brand too. Okay, but popular. that's skate. They had a, shit like they always do it's, shit like it's that. It's a, I mean, but it's Nike. Ooh. Yeah, still, but like, it's Nike. They they know who's buying they them as before it smaller, went like they would reach global. Out to smaller companies. Yeah. So you feel like they're just not doing it no more? I just feel like they're not going for like who influences the influencers. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of these. All your favorite influencers. Trust me. If you just go look at who they're following, you'll bump into a lot of people who you're like very surprised to realize, like, oh, these are cool fucking people. Like, and they just I would don't like have to, the I would like to see like Rocky's Finsta and who he follows. Like some shit like that. He'd be one. surprised. <laughs> probably some shit. Yeah. yeah. Probably the podcast. He'd be very surprised. Slit. <laughs> Slit. Up the skull. I was honestly looking at Rocky's following today. That's kind of crazy. Really? Damn, bro. Hop off and bro dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, know know, people, bro. I know people who get <laughs> Nigga, you just said you wanted to see the nigga Finsta. <laughs> Fuck out of What's here. What's wrong with that, bro? I'm trying to tap in, nigga. No. To be honest, I know, I know people with under a thousand followers who actually get hit up by certain people who, like, wish, like, who, are late. Who, have, who have endless money. They're very famous people who are like, yo, what should I get, like, next? Like, you know, like, tell me what's hot, basically. Hey, how do we feel about the, the Kendrick Lamar... Tiffany Crown. You know what? I actually want to go back and reference what you were saying. Remember when we were having like the argument, like, "Yo, if we're about to get iced out, nigga, who we going to?" I said Elliot. Yeah, I was like, I was like Elliot. So I'm Elliot. pretty sure that I said Jacob the Jeweler. You said, you said Jacob the Jeweler, or or you said Tiffany. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if Tiffany's out here doing custom pieces. Like, you just nah, can't just Tiffany's go to Tiffany. Tiffany's where you go to when you have lots of money to spend. Yeah. You, you don't said, go there for no janky shit. Like, but they said that shit costs three three M's. Yeah. You don't crown. go to jank like look, the only thing people know Tiffany for You see my little bottle James. Is that stupid little fucking necklace that every girl in like seventh, eighth grade had that cost like hundred and forty bucks. That was like their little money maker. But <laughs> not nah, if you want a piece from Tiffany, it, their doors are made out of fucking bank vaults for a reason. <laughs> huh? Like, it costs a lot to get. I'm not gonna lie, my niggas ran into Tiffany's during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> they had the uh, they, they, had, they hit Tiffany's. They ain't even gonna hold you. A lot to get. Oh something. God. What they get? They got some pearls, some gold. That's kind of cool. I ain't know diamonds, about the but scammers the going pearl. to Tiffany's. That's called. Nah, it was when niggas was looting the mall. Oh. They, yeah, they ran into Tiffany's. If you really got a have, bunch of shit. If yeah. you have money, money to spend on something and you and you don't want to go to a jeweler, it's Tiffany, Bulgari, Cartier, and I'm sure I'm missing like one, but maybe two, but those are the main franchises where it's like all of them pieces are not only gonna be like incredibly well made, they'll cost you a fucking an arm and a leg. Arm and a leg. That that fucking leg. Damn, I'm trying to find this. That Kendrick crown photo. is hard as shit, though. But the crown is super tough. Yeah. Was it all iced out? Yeah, yeah it's, it's all, all iced out. out. I think it's like there's little like silver thorns. That yeah, I'm out. so sick of seeing niggas in fucking bust down chains. Like, I'm so I, get I'm diamonds cool and down. other shit. Bro, the diamonds is never gonna leave, right? But yeah, I'm never get them in different the Cuban. Shit. I can say that the Cuban. Like, if you really got some money and then you fuck around, just get like a Cuban chain with some like diamonds. I feel like, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I'm not even mad at the Cubans either, no? honestly. I think it's like, cool when niggas just get diamonds and I like different Cuban shit. Hmm? I saw um, Eliante. I think he had on a New York Yankees fitted. And I think the New York sign iced was out. all iced out. And, like, that's cool. It's yeah. fucking Eliante. Well, that's yeah, that's, it's that's different. the man himself. You know but, who, but nonetheless, nigga, if you're going to spend all that money on things, like, get whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, I mean, that's what niggas want, You would bro. do a Cuban, maybe? No, I wouldn't do a Cuban, but like I'm not yeah, mad. like I like how the Cubans look. Okay. Shit, you know what I'm saying? I would do a carabiner. That's a a type of link. No, it's like a key holder. Oh, okay, something like that hangs off the. Me, type I thing? wouldn't. I probably wouldn't do no like all diamond chain. Like I'm mixing some stones, and my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like that's harder if you ask me. Not for sure. Yeah. When you throw in like the little gems yeah. and like other like multiple exactly. little things. I would. I would. I would do um diamond contacts. <laughs> Impossible. Like, oh, like, what if it's, like, grinding up? Would you, up? like, 
Yeah, like my my actual eyes. Yeah, wh like whatever the black part is, that would just be a giant diamond. That'd be tough. I need to know how that would work. Niggas um, out here getting BBL, so you know. I don't know. I'd probably bleed profusely okay, yeah, like no. every night, you, you but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, niggas are getting them. But I, I'd look tight. That height. What y'all think about that height changing surgery? The height changing oh, surgery. Oh shit! It's <laughs> fucking excruciating. It's like yeah, you, they literally, they bro. They stretch put your, your limbs, nigga. They put your um your knee in like a vice, and then they just stretch it out slowly and painfully. I don't think and that's then, how it is, nigga. No, that's exactly fuck what the surgery. Nah, is. I feel like they I asked. No, that's fucking how it is. That's some fucking nice shit. That's some fantastic <laughs> horse shit, nigga. Yeah, hell no. Shit. Hell no, no. It, it takes it. months. It takes fuck months. No. What do you think? They implant some shit in you? <laughs> no, I think they probably fuck with your spine or do some I think other they, weird I, shit. I thought it's they, like, changed some... It's in your shins. They add some bones. It is in your shins. I don't know. They do not add shit. It's in your shins. They extend them. Let me see this motherfucker. Now you got me doing the most. Ain't no way. I know man. about this shit. Ain't no way, bro. You don't know about it. I do know about this. I was watching a comedy podcast where they <laughs> where they talked about this exact thing. Damn, what should I, how does I Google it? How um height surgery. Hi, uh, yeah, height surgery. Height surgery. Yo, chill on my spelling, bro. Damn, this nigga. <laughs> if I'm right, if I'm right, I want a family. I, if I'm right, I want a family size barbecue Lay's chips. <laughs> want to be taller? Let's see. The International Center of Limb Lengthening performs cosmetic surgeries. Da, da, da. Height enhancement where both Dwarfism? legs, have you where seen, both have you legs are lengthened at the same time. Wait, bro. How do they do right? it? They, uh, they implant something in your knee. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. See, this is it. Yeah. This, I said the implant. Yeah. They implant like a rod in your like femur. Yeah, and it grows your 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 thigh limbs. Nigga, nigga thigh. He was on about you right, stretch your nigga. Shit out. Nigga said, a, "I owe you a family." Nigga tag. pulled that shit out of his ass, boy. <laughs> no, I was watching something. He's like, about "Nigga, it. I know about this, nigga. I watch comedy podcasts." <laughs> no, I I was watching something on it like multiple times too, yeah. and they they were talking about it, just like laughing their ass off about it. They're like, "I wonder if you could get a surgery that makes you shorter." I would I wouldn't even do like if I was like. Short, short, like four foot. Maybe it's I'm only like, two to they three were saying inches. The, That's crazy. The, yeah, and they were saying the recovery process for this is like eight months, and it's fucking gruesome. They should do a collab with Lil Uzi. <laughs> oh, a surgery collab with Lil Uzi and he gets taller. I feel like Uzi wouldn't even want it. Nah, Uzi gotta be a short king. Like. Yeah, he he he'd be stepping on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, nah, I wouldn't. I I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. <laughs> I'm just not even that down bad. I'm tall enough, look, nigga. Look I'm how much straight. I ain't no grew short, nigga. Too. He grew fucking like one inch. Oh, uh, yeah, that ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking loser, bro. He still gets zero pussy. That sucks. That nigga probably married. <laughs> Damn, why, if I was married. You think if you're married, married nigga, yeah, why are you getting, getting the surgery? All right, that fuck that. All right, hold on. I have another topic for y'all. You're an even bigger <laughs> loser. <laughs> Marco <laughs> wanted, us to, uh, wanted me to ask this on the pod. Have y'all seen that video of the, the father that's bringing his child? Some McDonald's, but he ain't bring it for his baby mom, the baby mama's other kids. And she got mad, right? She got mad and like said, "Fuck the McDonald's! Like you can't, you can't do this." I seen that video. So like, what was, what is y'all opinion on that? Initial thoughts: the bitch tripping, like, what the fuck? Yeah, I haven't seen that video, but um. So like, this here's the situation. Basically, you have a son. Don't care. I know, I know, I know the situation. Okay. He, he obviously. <laughs> he obviously don't, he don't, he don't like the other kids as much as like his own son. Okay, so my whole thing is, you got to do it right. You know what I'm saying? You got to pick up your kid, like leave with him, take him to McDonald's, bring him back with like nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay, that, yeah. that might be right. like a little bit more. That, I feel like that's the way you got to do it. Like, yeah. if, especially yeah, I, like, I kind of did that today at the crib, right? So everybody was like in the room. Yeah. And uh, I like was walking downstairs and I just asked my girl, I'm like, yo, you want some tacos? But I ain't asked nobody else. Yeah. And I kind of double thought like, damn, maybe I should ask my. But then I just said, fuck it. I would be upset if a nigga tripped on me. In like, why case, you ain't asked me for no, no time? Like, that's, why that's, that's different. That's different. Yeah. That's different, but yeah. it's if like you're in the with same a girl, world. Mm -hmm. she got kids. She's from not a with a pre existing them. situation. But uh, that's this situation. Mm -hmm. She got kids from a pre existing thing. Loki got to treat them kids the same as you treat your What if you got beef with the baby daddy? Fuck him and them kids. And nah, well. Starved. Okay, I don't <laughs> think he did. But look, my whole thing is just like, I don't think she's tripping. And I don't, Bro, think, I don't think video. he's wrong. She made a video. The bitch is going out and yeah, going to make sucks. a video. At the, at the end of the like, day, like, she sucks. You, 
But like your kid gotta live with the rest of them kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, if you, like you, you know, just gonna you gonna make the living situation more hostile doing some shit like that, you, you know what I'm saying? Kids, if bro. you ask me, I'm gonna be like, man, fuck this nigga, man, this nigga. Yeah, like he ain't even really my living. brother for real. Like we not think struggling the, together like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's how bro. I see it. I see it. You know? Yeah, that's they ain't all. Do nothing. Marco was like, I don't give a damn. That ain't my kids. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Marco asked you to ask us that <laughs> specific question. And then like, he just like DM'd me too, and it was like a YouTube link. Like I didn't, I didn't click on it, but it might be that same video. Marco, yeah. a fucking <laughs> social worker, <laughs> part time social worker. He was supposed to come today. <laughs> shout out, bro. Um, no, shout out, Marco. That's just funny. That that's the way he's like, yo, ask this on the podcast. Hey, we have Babyface Ray coming to school. Oh, yeah, Babyface Ray and GT. Shout out them boys. That man. was the first time I ever saw Baby Babyface Ray's face. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like, heard the music, right? Yeah, like, I've, yeah, I heard the music. I know you don't be OD like, tapped into, like, especially no, not no rap shit. Fuck no. Yeah. Nah, them we niggas is them. mad cool, man. GT came in the store. From Detroit? Yeah. yeah from Detroit. Um... But yeah, GT came in and he he was I feel like he was in a rush, huh? Like the store was kind of busy. He was like pacing around, like and, just looking for shit. Because there was hella niggas trying to talk to him too. Like oh, they were on dick. Like man. I said, I got I, I walked in from the back and I all I hear from like the corner of my eye is oh that's GT that's GT, and all of a sudden GT just walks right up on me. He's like what's up, bro? Shaking my hand and I was just like telling him if he needed size or anything. Who's that? It's a, uh, yeah, another he's rapper a from Detroit. Detroit rapper, and then yeah, that nigga instantly grabbed the money slides. He's like I need these. But, like, how much, like, all, I feel like we had all, like, the, the hood niggas in there. Yeah, the all, time those are all the hood niggas we fuck with, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, the homies and shit, too, but, like, bro, one of them, one of them older cats, he was like, he was like, bro, bro, he tapped his other homie. And the bro, he was like, you know how I be putting that shit on? He was like, I really getting all that shit from GT. He's like, that's GT right there, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 I did hear that shit. I was surprised as fuck. And then the nigga, like, tapped him, kept tapping him. He was like, lock me in, bro. Yeah. Lock me in. I'm like, bro, y'all finna fuck up what I got going yeah. on here. I'm like, damn. Man, you know what's like, funny? Yo, I realized. No, nah, we got it different because we worked there. Like, yeah. probably 90% of the hood niggas who be in the store do not like me at all. And it's because, like, I'm just myself. And, I'll, and you I know. I don't think they don't like you, bro. I don't no. think they like them. Not if he says No, nah, I don't think they don't like you. Well, I'm just like I'm myself, OD. So yeah. I'll be like, y'all heard that new MGMT, and they're like, the fuck is that? Or no, they yeah. they think that you be trying to get at their girls and shit, and then they start tripping. No, that was one chummy. example. That was one example, and that was like, chummy, chummy. First of all, yeah, chummy, chummy. That was like unbased, bro. First of all, was like y'all was all there. I wasn't there. I actually wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. They they was not the there. Story, yeah, I heard though. the story though. Yeah. Not. First of all, not my type. It was a big blood at all, me, right? No, I'm joking. I don't know. Second of all, was literally asking the dude questions the whole time. I was just, I was being like a used car salesman. Yeah, fuck it. Back to GT, man. <laughs> that nigga showed love, bro. He came through, and then what? He what he cop? He copped the Marty slides. That was it, the first time. The, yeah, day one, the night of the show, he just copped the slides, and then he just left. But then yeah. he like tapped in with us before we left, cause he was talking about, uh, he was talking to me about like how he used to be a manager over at Revival in Detroit or Revive 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 yeah, Revive. yeah, yeah he used to be Revive a manager so he like it was kind of cool because he knew about everything I used and to shit. buy Ambush from there really like in 09 yeah it, but he said that he nigga got out of jail and he had to get a job like they told him he had to get a job so yeah. he was like I'm gonna go get a job at the place I spend the most bread yeah Detroit got Revive Burn Rubber Revive is really the one that's closest like 151 but Burn Rubber was sick yeah. And I think I got one more, but I can't think of the name. But yeah, someone really wanted to fight me because I tried to sell them things. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. That that was like a crazy week for you, though, because you kept like there was another incident a week prior to that that we just talked about where some dude was getting on you like outside, right? By a no boo and shit. Like you start tripping on you about oh, a girl. Oh, no, that happened a long time ago. No, yeah, no, that shit was like pretty close to the other incident, though. No, it wasn't. No? No, it wasn't. Okay. They were they were spaced out, but I know exactly the incident you're talking about. Yeah. Damn, Damn they mem remember some homeless nigga ran up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got punched in the face like, by a homeless man. That is crazy. That happened. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was opening, I, I was uh, leaving this little bar in downtown, and <laughs> as I'm opening the back door to, like, let one of the females in, because I have a two-door, um, she gets in, and then as soon as, like, I look up, I just see a fist barreling towards my face. And then the dude had on a fucking bandana around his, like, entire face. So I was like, I, immediately I'm like, 
I'm either gonna get murdered or like I just have to fight this person. You know, I didn't know which one it was. Right. You know, like anyone, anytime anyone has a bandana, like a blue bandana, like wrapped around their fucking face, it's like there's Let's go. A, there's a p- big probability you might that might be the last thing you see. So I like assessed everything he had, and then I like squared up with him. I threw one punch, and then he just ran. Yeah, that was weird. He was definitely like a fucking homeless crackhead. He was a homeless crackhead. Yeah, that's what we deducted. <laughs> yeah. But like when you when all you see after getting punched immediately is a bandana around someone's face, it's like not settling at all. Yeah. No, anybody running with, like with a bandana your, yeah, on their your face. Your adrenaline, but, yeah, your adrenaline works different. That's super uh, like get the strap. I'm like, yeah, get the strap basically. <laughs> get the fucking strap. Um I I, I concur. Yeah. We got Banks to show tomorrow. You pulling up? Yeah. Pulling up, it's gonna be crazy. I feel like those are my my road dogs, like Banks, Jay, and Trish. Like just from going through like studios and studios. And I love out together. Can, I, can I ask y'all some random questions? Go ahead. What's the last time you got punched? Last time I got punched uh-huh. in the face. Yeah. Damn, that's a good question. <sighs> Probably uh, in Japan. In Japan. I don't even know if the nigga touched me though. Was, was it the, that's was my it last that fight. Logan Paul thing? Nah, this was a. Uh, oh, this is different. Yeah, you wanted to, yeah, I'll get into the story. But, like, so it was like, boom, we're leaving the club. It was probably, like, uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. We had to be back on base. It was me, my girl at the time, and one of the homies. And we used to live in, like, basically, like, these big old apartment buildings and shit. And everybody would just go back to, like, their room, barracks, apartments, whatever, and just go party. You know, you just bring all the bitches over there and shit. So that's what we were doing, heading back to our crib. And then I hear some dude yell down. And he was like, hey, he's like, hey. I'm like, what's up? And he was like, he's like, what you got? Cause I had a bag, like, and I had like mad bottles and shit. And I'm like, I'm like, you good, bro? Like, you good? Like, yeah. whatever. And he was like, what? He's like, what the fuck you mean I'm good? He was just like, he was a drunk marine, like he was like psyched out, low key. And uh, I, I just like scrubbed it off. I'm like, oh, this nigga tripping, some drunk dude on top, whatever. I just go to my room, and then we just start like partying in the room and shit. And then I hear, uh, I hear something outside the door. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, bro. <laughs> I just look at my girl, I'm like, bro, that ain't no fucking way, bro. I'm like, there's no way this nigga just pulled up to my spot, bro. Yeah. Nigga, I open the door first, I see this nigga. I instantly fire on him, bro. Like, I'm just like, just start firing on him. <laughs> and then fucking my roommate, like, comes out, like, starts, like, running. <laughs> oh, man, that's another story. But, yeah, starts running, and then, like, he, like, tackles the dude down and shit. And uh, he was, like, one of them, like, my white homies and shit. So he was, like, trying to break it up, like, yo, stop, stop. And then, like, as he, like, does that, I'm knowing, like, I don't want to actually get in trouble. So, like, I back off and shit. I see it. Whatever. But my girl at the time, we used to drink these things called chuhais, which is basically like a uh, like a four loco version, but in Japan. Uh-huh. But she took a full can of chuhai and <laughs> threw it at this nigga and literally hit his head and then busted everywhere. Yeah, she's a real one. Yeah, but she was going nuts. <laughs> and then she dipped inside inside the cribble crib, grabbed the big uh, Carla Risa, you know, the big like wine, the big yeah. badass she one. She was about to throw that? Bro, no. I guess she was just chilling like that behind the door. I don't even know if she's doing this, right? But like after she threw that shit, like, bro, threw the, the nigga like in the fucking elevator and like broke it up, whatever. But I, so I go right back inside the crib. All the four <laughs> oh, head. Boom. But I go inside the crib and like she's just behind the door like this with a big ass bottle. I'm like, bitch, if you like, what the fuck you doing, crazy ass? I'm like, if you were to hit this nigga like that's gonna be a whole nother. She thing. already did, oh, yeah. bro. She threw a fucking four logo yeah. can at his head. He was tripping though. I, I seen him like in the club like later on, fast forward and then like, he was like. He was tripping about the music and shit. Like, oh, he's like, oh, you changing the music? You changing the music? I'm like, bro, I'm not even changing the music. I had to pull him to the side. I'm like, nigga, I beat your ass before. Like, <laughs> I was really, like, pissed off, though. But he was, I think he was going nah, through something. It. It. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. When's the last time you got punched in the face? Um, I think the last time I got punched in the face, probably, like, during basketball practice. Mm. Like, my junior year. This fucking bitch-ass kid named Weston. So we were just like doing these drills. This nigga just keeps cutting me in line. I'm like, oh, whatever, I'm brushing it off. But then like now I'm like fucking up. And I'm oh, he's trying to get more mad. And shit. Yeah, I don't know. This nigga just keeps like going in front of me like this. And he's just like a weird ass kid. Like He wasn't cold. Like he's not cold at all. He's just on the team because, you know, we had a small school type shit. And I'm just like, this nigga just keeps cutting in front of me, keeps cutting in front of me. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Next time he cuts in front of me, I just push the shit out of this nigga. He comes back and punches me in the face. I'm just like, Ain't no way, bro. So I fire on this nigga a couple times and I kick his feet. And I'm just kicking this nigga on the floor and shit. And then I got suspended, got 
cut from the team you for a little bit. Swoop kick hey, like you no, I like I, I fired on this nigga and then like again I just like I said fuck it, I just kicked this nigga's feet. This nigga fell. Oh wait, and so you it. fired on him to the point where that he, he fired on me first, but, but I pushed folded, him. But he folded. No, no, like, like I I punched him first. He didn't he didn't fold so nothing. Like, and I just like, I was like fuck it. I, mean, I just tried kicking this nigga. Oh, so like, you yeah. like, got his feet? You yeah, I just kicked him. his feet and, and he fell. Yeah. yeah, and then I I started kicking this nigga on the floor. <laughs> And that was pretty much it. I got pulled to the side. Kicked off the team? Yeah, I kicked off the team Even for like a cu- couple games type shit. Damn. Yeah. It was it was slight. Hey, was your parents? I just missed the tournaments, basically. Because like the season ain't start yet. Were your parents pissed? Hell no. Nah. My parents have never been pissed at me. Ex- except for like... Time we, first time we got suspended? Hell no. Nah. I got suspended like damn near every year from school. Why? You got to utilize the mic. Why? Why? Okay, so like... Shit. Second grade, I got suspended... I threw a rock at some kid's head. No, I want, I want like the later on in life stories. Okay, we all do stupid shit. All right, before shit. Before sixth grade. All right, freshman year, what I get suspended for? I got suspended for the stupidest reason. Freshman year, I was, ba- I basically instigated a fight, and I got suspended for instigating. That's stupid. Second, uh, sophomore year, I got suspended for going to a fight that was after school and watching. And like anyone that was caught in the video got suspended. I was in the video like mm. gassing shit up, you already know. <laughs> and then fucking junior year, that shit happened with the basketball shit. Senior year, I got suspended because I had a lighter in my backpack. What the fuck? And that's the one my parents fired on me for. Everything else was stupid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, my, my the one with the lighter, they were like, why do you have a lighter, bro? My parents always raised me that shit. Like, yo, I would, yo, if I were to ever get suspended for anything like that I did, mm-hmm. Nigga, it was, it was like, overweight. don't even, don't, don't even come home. Like, your fate is going to be worse here than it would if you were to just fucking, like. Did you go to, like, a, did you go to, like, a regular high school, or did you went to, like, some? I went, I went to three different high schools. Like, a private school, too, or what did One you of them was, but, yeah, um, I, I went to, uh, like, a lot. Because you moved? Schools. No, because I just, like, you know, <laughs> I, I had behavioral issues. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. That's what was going no, on. Yeah. I remember I was in the fucking office, right, when they suspended me for the lighter. I was like, y'all really suspended me for a lighter? I was like, this is my brother's backpack. Like, it just happened to be a lighter in there. Like, and then he's like, all right, I got to call your parents now. I'm like, bro. Please. I was I like, yeah. I was like, look, <laughs> call them, tell them, but just don't tell them you suspended me for a lighter. Tell them anything. Just don't tell them I had a lighter. They're like, no. Nope. They're like, we have to tell them. And I'm on speakerphone. <laughs> No, they put my mom on speaker while they're telling her. That. I was like, oh, wow. my God. So why she start yelling at my fucking principal? Like, why does he have a lighter? Why? Like, uh, what, why does he have a lighter? I was just like, oh, my God. I don't know. I got. I went home. My mom went stupid on me. She's like, first things first, you're going to cut that hair. I had a big ass fro. Cut that shit. She beat she, your ass? Nah, she didn't beat my ass. Who cut it? Your dad cut it? Your dad beat Nigga, nah, I went to the barber shop. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the worst thing your daddy cut. Your daddy. Hell no. Nah. No, nah, my dad. My dad don't put his hands on us. Oh, yeah. You never got hit as a kid. From my mom. Not, okay. Not from my dad. Interesting. Yeah. Did you get hit as a kid? <laughs> yeah, my mom would whip the fuck out of us, but my dad is a sweetheart. He, he don't really got it in him. Man, you know what the worst one was? What? What, what was your worst one? Nah, you go ahead. Like, Oh, I already man. told myself. So the one that was the worst, I remember. <laughs> oh my god, I know my worst SB oh, too. Oh man, like I, bro, it's it's literally fucking, it's tattooed in your memory. Um, I was taking that shit, bro. The bottom of your foot with the wooden spoon. That shit was what? Ooh, that's fucking, light, boy. He said that's light. That's light, boy. Other than that, it was just the belt. The bro. bottom of your foot, boy. She was spanking my ass. That shit hurt, like hurt. What was your worst? With what? Nah, my worst one. With what? Huh? With what? With, uh, with a shoe, with a fucking hanger, a stick that would fucking, you would lock the backyard with. She would pick that shit up sometimes. Yeah, yeah. She got serious, but oh, the yeah, worst time, my mom took a whole sneaker and s- fucking smacked me right in the face with it. Yeah. In her hand, like, boom. In her hand. The oh, sneakers okay. in her hand, she smacked the shit out of my face. That was like. What, what sneaker was it? It was the worst, bro. It was probably just like a random sneaker. It wasn't even a sneaker. It was like you a, did it with the It was like one of her fucking. My mom threw one across the room one time, bro. Her, her She had Brett Favre aim, like. <laughs> Yeah, it showed dumb ass right, right in the, in the mouth, bro. Like, it was ah! <laughs> nah, one time my mom threw a pair of scissors at my brother's head. Ooh. Scissors. Hit this nigga in the head. This nigga is gushing blood. <laughs> oh. And he was, I ain't gonna lie. She was tweaking on he, that. He one. was so mad that this nigga tried to punch. My mom had a store. They were at the store. He tried to punch the store window. 
and broke his wrist. So this nigga just had, got a two piece. Like, oh this nigga's down God, bad. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. That sucks. But my mom was wilding sucks. for the scissors, though. I was yeah, like, yeah, you could have, you could have, you could have, could have done some crazy shit. Yeah, you like blinded him. She think, you think she apologized? She ain't apologized. Hell no, she ain't apologized. She the last like, hey, 10 minutes of right? this podcast have been brought to you by child abuse. Man. <laughs> nah, hell no. We would never call the police on my mama, man. <laughs> well, we're too old now, so yeah. whatever. Nah, even it if, It made bro, me who I am, you know? Nigga. I still ain't calling the police. Call, think... You called your mom a bitch before, Khaled? Fuck no. Are you no. out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind, dude? What? I, I'm my lucky call my mama, mama bitch, but I, like, it wasn't like I'm just in the room, like, bitch like it was i got dropped off from practice and she like made me lay we're already arguing and shit and then no, i was the, like tying my cleat and i was like this fucking dude the crazy bitch. the <laughs> crazy okay. rewind I the car met my mom has been like are you in a bad mood right now like why are you taking this out on me like i'm, I'm always like very like nice not yeah respectful with my mom you know nah. like, if i if she's like not her usual self i always like try and you know she's my best friend so the only know, time i've ever raised my okay. voice at my mom it was when my cousin broke a vase. We was playing around. He broke a vase. And she accused me of breaking the vase when my cousin had already left. And I was, like, yelling, like, I didn't fucking do it. Like, I was like, I didn't do it. And just the fact that I raised my voice at her, bro, she whipped the fuck out of me. It's a whole new. Yeah, and that's the only ever charge, time I've ever yeah. whipped, like, raised my voice at my mom. <laughs> it's a whole new charge. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call this a pod, mom, guys. Got Appreciate it. y'all pulling up. Yeah, I don't know how much of that last part we're gonna put in. Hey, yo, here. hold on. Bro got oh. Audemars plane, but he spent the, the bands on, on it. it. Yeah. Now what else he said? Uh, he said, "I was VIP in clubs and I wasn't old enough. You could throw me in the jungle, I come out and minked up." Yeah. 